kids, and thank you for watching the story with a lesson today. Actually, it's tonight. Tonight is Lag Ba'imer. And there's a beautiful story about a great Jewish hero, Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai. Now, Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai was having a conversation in his shul, his synagogue. One of the rabbis said, you know, the Romans, the Romans were very, very bad people. They had come, they would conquer countries, they in fact destroyed the base of Mikdash. And so, he said that the Romans were good because they came into Israel and they built aqueducts and they built bridges and they built bathhouses. They had a special way to heat up the water in those days. And these are things that people can use. So Rabbi Shimon Bar Yechai said, no, the Romans are not good, they're selfish. They build the aqueduct so they can have water, and the bridges so they can collect taxes, and the hot bath so they can have a hot bath. So you shouldn't make a mistake by thinking that an evil person is good. Could be that what he's doing is working for you, like a company. Google, for example. Okay, they make many products, but they don't make those products for you. They make those products for them. And it happens to be that when you use their products, then they can advertise to you and they can make money. So who does Google work for? You or for them? And so that's what Rabbi Shimon Bar Yechai said. And then another rabbi, I think his name was, um, I forget his name, I don't want to say a wrong name. So he didn't say anything because he probably agreed with Rabbi Shimon Bar Yechai, but he didn't want to get in trouble. So Rabbi Shimon Bar Yechai was very brave. So they reported this to the Roman emperor. And the Roman emperor said, well, that the rabbi who spoke good will get a reward. The rabbi who didn't say anything will be exiled. And Rabbi Shem Bar we're going to put him to death. So um, Rabbi Shem Bar and his son in law they hid in the base medrash, in the, where they used to learn Torah. They didn't go home because the soldiers wanted to come and get them. But eventually they couldn't hide any longer, so they went to a cave. And in this cave, they lived for 13 years. Until Elio Hanavi came and he said that the person, the uh, emperor who wanted your life has died, and now it's okay to come out. And when they came out, they studied the great secrets of the Torah, so... They were so holy that Lazar, his son, whatever he would look at, he'd see people working and he'd think, why are they working? They should be studying Torah because they were just busy studying Torah for 13 years. Actually, they came out in the 12th years. And so, whenever he would look at it, it would burn up. And then uh, his father, Rabbi Shimon, would look at it and it would come back. And Hashem said, I didn't take you out of the cave to destroy my world. Go back in the cave. And they went back in the cave for a whole year. And after a year they went out. And in fact, what's very interesting is Rabbi Shem Chai, what he was busy with was he was busy with just, he asked, what can I do to help people? Because he realized that all the tire we study all boils down to helping people. And there are two lessons the Rebbe says that we should take on this day. The first is something that Rebbe Shem Bar Yechai teaches, that our neshama, our soul, who are we really? We're a soul. If you didn't have life in you, your body is nothing. And that soul is really Hashem, is really God. And because there's only one God, that means it's the same God in many different bodies. So we're all one. It's just we're in different bodies. And this brings to Jewish unity and unity in the world. Because the life of everything is a soul coming from Hashem. And so we're one with all living things. And finally, Rabbi Shem Yechai dedicated his whole life to the study of Tyra and doing good. And that teaches us that everything we do, even when we're playing, we should not just play because I want fun. We should play because now it's the time to rest so later I'll have the strength to study Torah. When we eat, we shouldn't eat, oh, because I like food or I'm hungry. No, I'm eating because I want the strength 
to be able to do a mitzvah to study Torah. And I challenge you that to give your life to Hashem like Rav Shimon Bar Yechai did. Who knows? Maybe a few thousand years later, people will still be celebrating how wonderful you were. Thanks for watching. And always remember, the extra mitzvahs you do brings Mashiach even more speedy than the adults.